Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the treasure and the pearl. People love not only the miracles Jesus performed, they love the stories he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover thoughts and attitudes that needed to change. Last week, in the parable of the wheat and the weeds, we learned that good and evil will coexist together until the time Jesus called the end of the age. In this parable, we learn there are two different kinds of seed, good seed and poisonous seed. We also learn that there are two different kinds of planters, good planters and destructive planters. In the parable, there were two different plans to deal with evil in the present world. At the end of the parable of the wheat and the weeds, Jesus taught that there will be two final destinations, one in the presence of God and one away from his presence. Jesus said in the end, the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Matthew chapter 13, verse 43. Today we'll hear about two more parables that Jesus told. He shared these privately with his disciples rather than the way he usually did in one of his public sermons. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like hidden treasure, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. If you and I were walking and found a large sum of money laying on the ground, we might have taken a very different approach. We could look around and see if anyone nearby might have dropped money. If no one was around, we most likely would take the money and feel very blessed. But Jesus' stories often had an unexpected twist, just like this one did. The man does not take the treasure and go on his way, hoping that no one saw him. Instead, he buried the treasure and goes about selling all that he has to buy the field where the treasure is buried. What is this all about? Clearly, Jesus is using figurative language. In the before books, Israel is referred to as the treasure of God. God said to Moses, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my commandments, you shall be my treasured possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. In this parable, the field is all the earth, and the treasure is the people of Israel. Jesus is the man who is prepared to give everything he has to purchase the field and the treasure. In this story, the kingdom of God is something that is hidden. The kingdom and its values cannot be picked up like dropped money. There's a price to pay to inherit the values of the kingdom. And when we are willing to give all that we have, we are rewarded with possessing the kingdom of God. By giving all we have, we possess more than we could ever imagine. Now, without saying anything more about the hidden treasure, Jesus told another parable. He said to them, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding the one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 and 46. Many years ago, a follower of Jesus went to India to share the message of him with the people who lived there. In the course of being there, he became very good friends with a man who made his living diving for pearls. He spent many evenings with Sanjay reading the Bible to him and sharing the message of Jesus. Sanjay loved the stories of Jesus, but he kept insisting that the Christian way is too easy for him. He did not think salvation could be as simple as accepting a free gift. He believed 
that salvation needed to be earned. Their friendship went on for many years. One evening, Sanjay showed up at Mr. Chapman's door. This time he did not want to come in. He wanted Mr. Chapman to come with him to his house so he could show him something. When they arrived at Sanjay's house, Mr. Chapman learned that this was going to be their last evening together. Sanjay was moving away 900 miles to the big city of Delhi. He went on to say he was finally going to earn his way to heaven by crawling all the way to Delhi on his knees. There was nothing Mr. Chapman could say to change Sanjay's mind. That night, he also learned that Sanjay had a son that he had never spoken of before. Mr. Chapman was shocked to learn that Sanjay's son had worked with his father in the pearl business. Sanjay's eyes began to fill with tears as he spoke about his son. He said his son was one of the best divers. He could dive deeper and longer than all the other divers. And one day while diving, he found the largest pearl he had ever seen. When this incredible pearl caught the eye of Sanjay, he dove down deeper than ever, grabbed the pearl, and swam as fast as he could to the surface. As he broke the surface, he placed the magnificent pearl in his father's hands. A few moments later, he died. His lungs had collapsed. Sanjay began to tremble as he opened the box to show his best friend the pearl his son had found. Sanjay knew that he might never return from Delhi, and he wanted to give his best friend the best pearl his son had found. He placed in Mr. Chapman's hands one of the largest pearls ever found in India. When Chapman saw the pearl, he knew immediately that it was perfect. At that moment, the Spirit of God spoke to him about sharing the message of our parable today, the pearl of great price. Mr. Chapman said, please let me buy the pearl from you. I'll pay 10000 Sanjay stiffened his whole body, and he said, this pearl is beyond price. No one in the world has enough money to pay for what this pearl means to me. You can only have it as a gift. Gently, Mr. Chapman replied, the pearl was too valuable to receive without paying for it. Sanjay said, you don't understand. My only son gave his life to get this pearl, and I won't sell it for all the money in the world. I can't sell it to you, but I can give it to you. Just accept it as a token of my love for you. Mr. Chapman choked up and was silent for a minute. Then he took Sanjay by the hand and lovingly said to him, what I have said to you about offering to buy your son's pearl is exactly what you have been saying to God. Sanjay and Chapman looked deeply into each other's eyes and tears began to flow down their cheeks. Sanjay's eyes were opened to see the great price that God's son had paid to offer him salvation. That day, Sanjay gave his heart to Jesus. He concluded that the price Jesus paid for our salvation was so high that no one on earth could ever buy it. It cost God the lifeblood of his son for us to gain entrance into heaven. Some things are priceless and can never be bought or earned. In the parable of the hidden treasure, Jesus gave everything to buy the field and offer salvation to Israel. In the parable of the pearl of great price, Jesus is the merchant, and the pearl is the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus gave up everything to offer salvation as a free gift to all Gentiles. Just as the pearl is formed inside an oyster through suffering caused by irritation, so the church was formed through the piercing, wounding, and suffering of the body of Jesus. The Apostle Paul understood this and wrote, For you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, 
Yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. Through this message, I hope you've been able to grasp that you are a pearl of extraordinary worth to God. You are deeply loved by God. Jesus loves you so much that he gave up the glory he had in heaven to come to rescue us from sin. The apostle Peter gained the same understanding. and He put it this way, you were ransomed from the feudal way inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood, like that of a lamb, without blemish or spot. 1 Peter chapter 1, 18 and 19. I visited some of the great pearl-producing countries in the world. I've learned that pearls come in a many colors and a variety of sizes. Pearls range from pure white to cream to pink to blue to deep black. Salvation is offered to everyone every tribe and people of all languages. The Apostle John said, I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, every nation and tribe and language and people. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. I pray that God has opened your eyes to see how much God loves you and how much his son suffered to offer salvation to you as a free gift. We invite you to receive Jesus as your Savior today. Accept what he did for you on the cross as a gift. Remember now that Jesus shared these parables privately with his disciples. He asked them, have you understood all these things? And they said to him, yes, Matthew chapter 13, verse 51. Then Jesus invited his disciples to give themselves completely to sharing his message with everyone for the rest of their lives. I pray that others will see in your life God's hidden treasure, the pearl of great price shining brightly. Perhaps like Sanjay, you've been trying to earn your salvation. Sanjay's eyes were open to see the great price Jesus paid for our salvation. Accept what Jesus did for you on the cross. Receive him as your Savior right now. Write to me and share with me what God has said to you as you have been listening to this message. Next week, we'll continue studying the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International, Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.